15. The Lion's Roar of Queen Srimala. Then Queen Srimala implored the Lord with these words. May the Tathagata's power make me eloquent for still further explanations of the faultless meaning. The Lord replied, Queen, you shall be eloquent. Queen Srimala appealed to the Lord, Lord, there are three kinds of good son of the family and good daughter of the family who guard themselves to be unblemished and unspoiled regarding the profound Dharma, and these generate much merit and also have entered the path of the great vehicle. Who are the three? Lord. 1. Any good son of the family or good daughter of the family who has the profound doctrine through introspection. 2. Any good son of the family or good daughter of the family who has the knowledge in the precincts of the Dharma. 3. Any good son of the family or good daughter of the family who shrinks from gaining the knowledge of the profound doctrine by himself, thinking. I cannot possibly know it, this meaning can only be known by the Tathagata himself. And so keeping the Lord in mind, obtains the mental presence of the Lord. Lord, those are the three kinds of good son of the family or good daughter of the family. Lord, there are sentient beings, differing from the three kinds of good son of the family or good daughter of the family, who occupy themselves seriously with the profound Dharma, but are attached to mistaken ideas and Pasi's teachers, talking much. Lord, may I defeat in the manner of a royal decree those persons who have turned their backs on the illustrious doctrine and who have the rotten seed of the heretics. May I utterly overcome those rotten seeds by the scope of command among gods, men, and demigods. When Queen Srimala had appealed with those words, her Rinu joined her in bowing to the feet of the Lord. The Lord then said to Queen Srimala, Excellent, most excellent, timely and opportune is your explanation of the means for properly guarding oneself and the profound doctrine and your explanation of overcoming the enemies of the illustrious doctrine. Queen, the worship of a hundred thousand Buddhas is less a marvel than your explanation of the meaning. Then the radiant Lord illumined the bodies of the entire Rinu and ascended skyward to a height of seven tala. By the magical power of levitation he proceeded in the direction of Shravasti. Meanwhile Queen Srimala and her retinue, with hands folded at their heads, were gazing enraptured and unblinking at the Lord. When the Lord passed out of sight, Queen Srimala and her retinue showed utter transport in their faces. One by one and again they praised the merits of the Tathagata. Not losing their attentive mindfulness of the Buddha, they returned to the city of Ayodhya. Back in the palace, Queen Srimala converted King Yasometra to the great vehicle. She converted all the women in the capital seven years or older to the great vehicle. King Yasometra converted all the men in the capital seven years or older to the great vehicle. In the same manner the whole state was brought over to the great vehicle. Epilogue. On his part, the Lord arrived at the Jetavana and called the Venerable Ananda. He also remembered Devendra Sakra. In an instant, Devendra Sakra, surrounded by the retinue of gods, appeared in front of the Lord. Then the Lord extensively explained this scripture to Devendra Sakra and the Venerable Ananda. Kausika, retain this scripture. Kausika, Explain it to the thirty-three gods. Ananda, retain this scripture. Ananda, explain it to the fourfold retinue, monks, nuns, male and female laymen. Then Devendra Sakra asked the Lord, Lord, what is the name of this scripture and how is it to be retained? The Lord replied, Kausika, this scripture has infinite merits. If all the disciples and self-enlightened ones are unable to know, to discern, or to understand the entire meaning of the scripture, then how much less can other sentient beings? Kausika, just so, this scripture is profound and a source of great merit. Therefore, I shall tell you the titles which convey the merits of the scripture.
listen well and retain them in mind. Devendra Sakra and Ananda urged the Lord, saying, Excellent! We will listen to what you teach. The Lord spoke as follows. Retain this as, praises of the true and infinite merit of the Tathagata. Also retain it as, the inconceivably great vows. Also retain it as, the great aspiration which includes all aspirations. Also retain it as, teaching the embrace of the illustrious doctrine. Also retain it as, teaching the entering in one vehicle. Also retain it as, teaching the boundless noble truths. Also retain it as, teaching the Tathagata Garbha. Also retain it as, teaching the Dharmakaya. Also retain it as, teaching the hidden purport of the meaning of voidness. Also retain it as, teaching the one truth. Also retain it as, teaching the permanent, steadfast, calm, eternal, and the one refuge. Also retain it as, teaching what is the wayward stage. Also retain it as, teaching the hidden purport that the mind is intrinsically pure. Also retain it as, teaching the true son of the Tathagata. Kausika, also retain it as, lion's roar of Queen Srimala. Also retain all explanations contained in this scripture as, eliminating all doubts, deciding the cause, clarifying the final meaning, and entering the one vehicle path. Kausika, I entrust to your hands this scripture that teaches the lion's roar of Queen Srimala. For as long as the illustrious doctrine lasts in the world, so may you recite and teach it in all the worlds of the ten quarters. Then Devendra Sakra exclaimed to the Lord, Excellent! Having embraced this scripture in the presence of the Lord, and having learned it by heart, Devendra Sakra, the Venerable Ananda, others who had assembled there, and gods, men, demigods, and heavenly musicians all rejoiced and praised what the Lord had pronounced.